Okay, so AP Psychology, we are back at it, and a pretty exciting day today because we are done with all new material. So uh, everything from here on out is going to be focused on that AP test, some things that I think you will see in that AP test, uh, practicing writing FRQs, kind of starting with today. Um, and then we're going to have a couple Zoom sessions uh, for you guys to ask specific questions if you want to. Almost use those as like tutorials. So when I set those up, it's obviously optional. You don't have to attend. Uh, it is strictly there for me uh, to have an access to you to answer any specific questions that you have that may be easier, uh, easier explained uh, you know, through a, a Zoom instead of like a Canvas messaging or a discussion board or something like that. So um, we're going to dive right into today. Uh, this lesson is going to be pretty short because it's something we've covered already, but going into this year's AP test, which is different than any other AP test that, that I've ever had and you guys have ever had uh, with it being online and open book, open internet, open note, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it is still going to be super important to make sure and follow this little acronym that we have in AP Psych uh, that we said is SODAS, right? S-O-D-A-S. -S. And I want to go through what each one of those means. Uh, and then you guys are going to have a practice uh, question today. Uh, try to limit yourself to 25 minutes for that practice question because that is all the time that you're going to have on the actual test and that browser is going to shut down and not allow you to upload anything after that. So uh, do not spend more than 25 minutes on it, even if you don't complete it, even if you don't get all of the, uh, the bullet points written on. Um, you know, but, but know if you don't get all those bullet points written on that you're going to have to button down some things uh, before that AP test comes up in May. So uh, let's just get to the, uh, the acronym here. Uh, so here's five things that I want you to do when you're writing these free response questions. And the fact that this exam is online and open book, open note, like I said earlier, uh, has no bearing on this. You still got to follow this. This is a huge thing when it comes to writing good free response questions that are going to get favorable grades from the graders. Okay. Um, the first S stands for spacing. And basically what I'm asking you to do here is space out your answers. So you're probably going to be given like, you know, five or six bullet points. Each one of those bullet points is kind of a separate Thing that you need to address. So what I'm saying is don't follow maybe your instinct of writing a big long essay that you would for like an English class with an intro and a conclusion and a main idea. Do not do it. Don't waste your time, especially with only having 25 minutes. It's a complete waste of time as far as how these things are graded. We are not looking as graders for any type of main idea, any type of paragraph. Uh, we are strictly looking at did you answer that one point, okay? And there is no partial credit. You either get it or you don't. Uh, so spacing is super important. So the first bullet point that you get, make sure and write on that bullet point, apply it, do all the other things that we're going to talk about in this acronym. Then skip a couple lines, skip a couple spaces if you're doing it online, which most of you probably will be doing, and then go on to the next bullet point and start completely over, right? Start from the very beginning. Um, so yeah, that's the S, spacing. O is for order. Um, I think it's very important to keep the order of your answers uh, the same order that they're giving to you in the question. So once again, you're going to be writing on, you know, five, six bullet points. You should answer those bullet points in the exact same order in which they're given to you in the question. Uh, don't skip them. Uh, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say don't skip them. If you feel better about answering some other bullet points first, then just kind of skip a line and you can go back and put your answer in that empty space. It's going to be 10 times easier doing that this year with you guys doing it on the computer instead of writing out your answers in like a, a written answer test booklet. Um, you know, you'll be able to just skip a couple lines and answer maybe the third bullet point and then go back and put your answer in that second bullet point later. So order is something that you should not uh, have a problem with at all, especially with this new digital format. Uh, the D is for define. Any term that you are given, try your best to define it, okay? And once again, I want to be very honest, this should be a piece of cake this year because even if you don't know the definition, you can quickly look it up online, you can look it up in your notes or whatever, and you can give a pretty you know, darn good definition. Now, once again, with that being said, this year more than any other, they will not give you points for a definition alone, but sometimes that definition can help you uh, when you're explaining it and applying it back to the prompt. So this definition uh, is not the most crucial part of the answer, uh, but it definitely can help you get points if your uh, application is a little messy. Okay, so define the term that you're being asked about. Here's the most important one, and this will be the most important one this year by far. Since you have open internet and open source to look this stuff up, they are going to heavily look at application. How do you apply the, the term that you're given back to the prompt and what they're asking you to do? So, so two things here. Number one, 
uh, apply it back to the question some way, somehow, right? Uh, if you're given observational learning, uh, show how observational learning has taken place in the prompt, right? And then number two, look at the part of the question you're answering, because a lot of these questions have like a part A and a part B. If you remember one that we did in class said like, you know, describe how these terms in part A would help the person's performance, and then in part B it was like describe how these terms would hurt their performance, right? So if you're given a term, uh, the second part that I wanted to, uh, to talk to you about with the application is make sure that you are doing it with the part of the question uh, that's, that's asking you uh, to do that. So if it says like, how is observational learning going to help you uh, in this you know, situation, then make sure and apply it in a way that it helps the person or helps the, uh, you know, the individual that's in the question uh, do that thing better, do that task better. So make sure apply the term back to the prompt um, and, and always do it in a specific way. Uh, like I said, with part A and part B. If you remember in class, I'm not sure if I told this to all the classes or not, but it's definitely a good piece of advice. A simple way to do this is at the end of each one of your bullet points, if it's asking you in part A to, to say how it's helping the person, you know, just write that as your last sentence. And that is how Charlie is being helped in this situation. And that is always like an answer to part A, right? Even if you forget to do it specifically within the question. So look, the application is by far going to be the most important thing this year. I believe you're going to have a lot of questions that say something like, you know, uh, apply the operational definition to the dependent variable, right? Especially in that research question that we're going to get, which I'm going to give you an example or a sample FRQ today that has uh, research definitions in it. So when you get that, make sure that you are applying it back. You can define operation uh, operational definition or dependent variable all you want. It's not going to get you any points. You have to apply it back. Tell me in the prompt, what is the dependent variable, right? Like you're going to have to say what the dependent variable is in the prompt. And, you know, just, just for a little review for your guys, uh, the independent variable is the one that the researcher is manipulating. The dependent variable is the one that they are researching, the one that they are measuring, that they have no control of, but they want to see how it's going to change or be adjusted uh, in relation to how you change things with the independent variable. So, look, there's going to be a lot of application um, in this uh, this format this year because you guys are going to have so much information at the at the you know, it's your fingertips. Uh, they're going to want to make sure that you can apply that information in the correct way. So the application, no doubt, by a mile, is going to be the most important thing. And then the last thing is actually the least important thing. If you're able to do this, great. If not, it's not a huge deal. Uh, but the last S stands for synonym. Uh, it is the least important of these five. Uh, I feel like the, the first four are way more important than this one. But this is my reminder to you to just try not to use the words that you are given to define the words, right? For example, the sample FRQ I'm giving you today, one of the terms is observational learning. Do not define that as learning that takes place while doing observations. That's not going to get you any points, okay? That's just like mimicking the question, parroting the question, however you want to say it. Uh, try to find a different way to define it, not using the terms that are actually in uh, the bullet point that you're given. So, uh, you know, for for example, I, I see this a lot with like retroactive and proactive interference. They'll say things like, well, that's interference that happens retroactively or interference that happens proactively. That tells me nothing about your knowledge of what that is. Uh, so once again, it just goes back to the importance of that application. So look, here's your task for today. I'm going to give you a sample free response question. I want you to set a watch. I want you to, you know, say, hey, Google, set a 25 minute timer, whatever you want to do. OK, and I want you to take 25 minutes, knock out that free response question the best way you can. Use your Internet, use your notes, use your books, just like you're going to on the actual AP test. And uh, I will grade it based on uh, basically effort and completion. Okay, I'm not going to grade it on accuracy. And then what we're going to do next class is I'm going to go over like what we would have been looking for in grading that free response question. I think that'll go a long ways to helping you guys kind of understand how these things are not only given, but how they're graded uh, and how you guys can maybe can do a little bit better on them. So uh, like I said, 25 minutes only. Uh, you know, if, if you're not getting all the, the bullet points answered within that 25 minutes, then obviously, you know, you got some work to do and you got to work a little quicker going into the actual AP test. But uh, yeah, if you guys have any problems or any questions about uh, this assignment today, since it's kind of something different than where we've done in the past, uh, then make sure and uh, you know shoot a Canvas message at me. But it's all through Canvas, uh, nothing through the AP Classroom, so you should be able to access it pretty easily. So any questions, uh, Canvas message me. Uh, but yeah, that's it for today.